This quick tips video was requested by Scuba Crow, who asked, James, can you make a video about reels? How long should they be? And can you use one to deploy a DSMB? I've got you, Scuba Crow. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James and welcome to this, the next in our series of videos called Quick Tips. And if I can, I'd like to get real with you. Yeah, I know, corny joke. But it's funny, the topic actually hasn't come up until Scuba Crow sent me that message and I was like, hey, we haven't tackled reels. I mean, way back in Quick Tips number two, we talked about uh, spools and how to prepare a spool for scuba diving, but we haven't actually talked about big boy reels yet. So this is long overdue. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna head to the workbench and break it down for you. You guys make your next dive on the subscribe button and I'll see you over there. Okay, so I have three reels here to show you, different designs, different lengths of line on them. Uh, but let's talk about some of the common features you should look for when buying your next reel. So number one, the spool. In this case, this red plastic part here, black plastic over here, and uh, Delrin on this reel here. The spool has one very basic job, and that's to hold the line and keep it organized. So the wider the circumference of the spool and the deeper the depth to the center core uh, will dictate how much line the spool can actually hold. How much line do you need? Well, that depends on what you're doing. If you're doing super advanced cave penetration or wreck penetration, uh, you know, you can never have enough line. I know divers that get in the water with thousands of feet of line. But for most open water recreational divers, you're gonna be using the, bag, the line probably to shoot a DSMB, in which case I'd normally recommend about twice your maximum depth in line. So if you're diving to 100 feet, have a reel with a couple of hundred feet on it. And the reason is because when you shoot a DSMB to the surface, it doesn't go straight up. The current is gonna take it sideways. So you know, Pythagoras. So on the subject of line, as you can see here, I have a couple of different thicknesses and a couple of different colors of line. Please don't judge me on this spool here. As you can see, I broke the winding handle off of it. So it's a bit of a mess and I only dug it out to show you guys a little bit of a difference. But this is more of a traditional braided line, uh, which is nylon. Uh, the Dacron high vis line is generally what I prefer these days, um, just because it is so bright and also because it's braided flat, which means it sits tighter onto the reel itself and you can get more line on per given spool. So for those reasons, that's generally the way modern divers go. And this is truly high vis. You can see this across the room in silt out conditions. That's what you want. If you're laying line as a navigational aid, why wouldn't you use the brightest, most high vis line available? Other features, uh, a line needs a locking mechanism. On this case here, this is called a slide lock reel. Uh, you see this little button here. Basically, if it's in the open position, the, li the line can turn, uh, and then flicking it to the middle locks the reel so you avoid accidental deployment of the line, which I've done it, everyone's done it. It's, you know, it's a shameful thing, happens to every diver. Um, I found that the slide lock reel you know, on boats, which is predominantly how I dive, where you gear up in a seated position. Uh, if you've got this thing on your hip D-ring, uh, that button gets knocked quite easily into the open position and you end up getting into the water and the line's paying out and you look like the uh, kid at school who leaves the restroom with some toilet paper hanging off their heel. It's, it's, it's not a good look. It happens to everyone, but you, you don't want that. So I've made it part of my pre-pre-dive uh, check just before getting in the water to just physically touch the button and make sure it's in the center position. You'll see me just reach down and touch it and make sure that the reel is locked off. Um, these two reels feature a slightly different me locking mechanism. This one just has a screw that screws in from the side and prevents the spool from rotating. And this has the same thing except the screw is pointed onto the edge of the spool itself, just there. Then you have a handle of some kind and a winding knob of some kind. So handle, winding knob, and so on. Uh, you wanna make sure that these are user-friendly for your type of diving. So if you're an ice diver, for example, that dives either with really thick gloves or dry gloves or so on, it's no use you getting a fiddly, delicate little handle and a little tiny winding knob. You want something that's big and chunky and that you can handle with large gloves. So that's definitely a consideration when selecting a reel. And then of course you need an attachment point of some kind, which is usually a bolt snap, single ender, double ender in this case. We talked enough about bolt snaps 
in episode five of Quick Tips. So go back and check that out if you haven't done so already. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video was really helpful for you. I had to, come on, come on. If it was, give it the old thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so already. And let us know in the comment section below what other topics you'd like to see covered in a Quick Tip style video. Until next time, my name's James. This was your Divers Radio video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.